In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Welcome back to your program of Word of Life. And let's continue our simple commentaries on the Gospel of St. Mark. Last time we were in the chapter number 9. Um, then he answered and told them, Indeed, Elijah is coming first and restores all things. And how is it written concerning the Son of Man that he must suffer many things and be treated with contempt? But I say to you that Elijah has also come and they did to him whatever they wished as it is written of him. As you all know, he did not mean Elijah himself, but he meant St. John the Baptist, who came with the spirit of Elijah. He was very much similar to the character of Elijah. That's why our Lord Jesus Christ said, they did to him whatever they wished, because Elijah was persecuted by Ahab and others, and also John the Baptist was killed by, by Herod. And when he came to the disciples, he saw a great multitude around them and scribes disputing with them. Immediately when they saw him, all the people were greatly amazed and running to him, greeted him. And he asked the scribes, what are you discussing with them? You know, whenever it comes to any time that the Lord leave his disciples, the scribes tried many times to put them down and to put them into problems. And they asked them many questions. Uh, so they get no answers. Um, that's why it, it's written here. He saw a great multitude around them and scribes disputing with them. Immediately when they saw him, all the people were greatly amazed and running to him, greeted him. Then he asked the scribes, what are you discussing with them? Then one of the crowd answered and said, teacher, I brought you my son who has a mute spirit and wherever it seethes him, it throws him down, he foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and become rigid. So I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out, but they could not. I think you, you remember the story of this young man who had the devil inside himself, and um, his father was seeking his uh, healing and he went to the disciples he did not find the lord himself and the disciples unfortunately they could not cast the evil um, power from him that's why he told the lord i asked you uh, or i brought my son to you he did not brought the son to himself to the lord himself but he brought him to the disciples, but he considered the Lord and his disciples one team, so they couldn't make the miracle. And you know, he described his case. He said that wherever it seethes him, it throws him down. He foamed at the mouth, gnashed his teeth, and becomes rigid. It's like um, uh, an attack or fit of like epilepsy, but it's caused here by this bad spirit. So I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out, but they could not. Now come the question why they could not cast the, the demon out of the young man, although they had the power. If you remember a few chapters before, we mentioned that the Lord gave his disciples the power to cast the demons out of men. So although they had the power and the authority, but one time they couldn't make it. So there should be some good reason for this. He answered him and said, 
O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. First of all, the Lord said, answered the man saying, O oh, faithless generation. So this problem is very much related to faith. He couldn't see the faith in the eyes of the man seeking the miracle for his son. And also he accused his disciples of not having enough faith to cast the demon out. So although they had the power or the authority over the demons, but sometimes they lack faith. So even the gift of the spirit without enough faith, it, it doesn't work. How long shall I bear with you? So as if the Lord is saying, I gave you the power, I spent many times with you, I gave you the example, the role model, I made many miracles before your eyes, I pushed you to be in my likeness, why you failed? Bring him to me. Then they brought him to him. And when he saw him, immediately the spirit convulsed him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming at the mouth. So the attack happened when they brought the young man to the Lord. Um, he fall, fell down and some foaming comes out of his mouth. So he had the convulsion uh, because of the bad spirit. And there is another question why it happened uh, now before the Lord himself. Sometimes we may think that because the demon felt the presence of the Lord, uh, it attacked the child and uh, brought him down. So he asked his father, how long has this been happening to him? The Lord asked the father how long he suffered from this. And this means that the Lord felt uh, sympathy with the child and he felt that the demon uh, gave them long suffering. So um, he was about to cure him, but he asked for the long period happening because this means that uh, although it's very easy for the Lord to cure any man, to heal any problem, but still he feels uh, sorry for whoever suffers for such time. And he said from childhood, and often he has thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. So the father felt so bad while telling his story and he told the Lord that his, young, his child uh, fell down in the water, in the fire because of this demon power. And he asked for the compassion of the Lord and his help. Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Again, the Lord mentioned before that this generation is faithless, having no faith. So he asked the father, do you have real faith? Do you really believe in me as the Lord, as the one who can help your child? So it's not an easy question, especially after the failure of the disciples. Now it's more complicated because let's assume that this man came before having some little faith in the Lord and his disciples because he uh, knew from many uh, people that the Lord made such miracles. But because of the failure of the disciples, I think he lost all the faith. So the Lord asked him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. And this, you know, um, like a theme we can live with, all things are possible for those who believe. So we need to believe. And you know, this kind of faith, we have very little faith and we need to grow up in, in believing in God, in trusting his power and his wisdom. 
Immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. This is one of the most strange verses in the Bible because he said, I believe, and then he said, unbelief. This means that he believes and he does not believe. How come he believes and he has no belief? It's, it means that he wished to believe. He had some belief. He is trying to believe, but he fails because his logic, the circumstances around, puts him away from faith. He cannot believe while seeing his child suffering for such many years and the problem is there and there is no help even. Um, he got no help from the disciples. So he said, please consider my weakness, help my unbelief. This is, you know, like a short prayer. We can pray continuously. Please, Lord, help my unbelief. Whenever it comes to doubts, to suspicions, to um, bad times, we need to pray, God, please help my unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, so the crowd came running to see could the Lord um, heal this young man after the failure of his disciple or he will he could not. He rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. So he commanded the spirit to come out of the child. And you know, he described the spirit saying deaf and dumb. So this spirit made this man is uh, deaf and dumb. So the spirit comes in many bad way, bad pictures. Uh, but the authority of the Lord is, you know, uh, absolute. He can do whatever. So he commanded the spirit to come out of the child. And also he commanded the spirit not to enter him anymore. And this is, you know, um, uh, an important message for all of us that even the demon may get out of anybody, but it may enter him back if he stayed away from the Lord. So while growing in the spirit, in the Holy Spirit, I mean, we need to stick to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, to stick to the church, to stick to the communion, to avoid the warfare of the demons. Then the spirit cried out, convulsed him greatly and came out of him and he became as one dead so that many said he is dead but Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he arose. So with the command, command of the Lord um, the young child you know fell down and he had an attack of convulsion um, but he cried and then he lost his conscience, so many considered him as dead. And this, you know, um, points at the, the target of the devil is to let everyone um, end in eternal death. So, but in this case, he did not die because of the power of the Lord, but he lost his conscience for few minutes with the hand of the Lord he lifted him up and he aroused and when he had come into the house his disciples asked him privately why could we not cast it out this is an important question because you know they had the power to cast demons out they got the authority but in this case they failed so by listening to the a uh, discussion happened between the Lord and the father of the child. They knew that it's essential to have good faith, strong faith. So they thought that they lack faith, but they asked the Lord why, why we failed this time. 
So he said to them, this kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. And if there is a, a strong relationship between praying, fasting, and faith, by praying, our faith is stronger by spending time in fasting and giving um, quiet time to the Lord, we are growing up in believing in the Lord. So there is a strong relationship between the virtue of faith and the practice of praying and fasting. Uh, also, this you, we can apply on many things. When, when it comes to times of, um, uh, of frustrations, of, of despair, of, of uh, problems, marital problems, uh, educational problems, service problems, we need to fast and pray and pray because this kind of demon presence or devil affection needs this power of prayer and fasting to be cast away. Then they departed from there and passed through Galilee, and he did not want anyone to know it. So in many times, the Lord uh, tried to stay in silence, to spend time with his disciples away from the multitude. So he was not letting many people know that he is coming to Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it. This, this is the message for us as servants, priests, and, and many who serve the Lord, that we should have this quiet time and stay away from problems and crowds to get again the power of prayer, the power of the presence of the Lord, the power of the word of life. So we need to stay some time in silence. For he taught his disciples and said to them, The Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of men, and they will kill him. And after he is killed, he will ride the third day. But they did not understand this saying and were afraid to ask him. So when they were alone, the Lord and his disciples, he revealed his secret that he is going to die for uh, the redemption of human being and he will be killed because of the betrayal of, of some of his disciples of the, or the betrayal of the Jews with the hands of man and he will rise on the third day. So he told them what's going to happen and although the Lord will repeat this message many times, but the disciples, because they couldn't understand, they did not want to accept the idea that the Lord will be killed, and they couldn't understand the idea of resurrection. So, as if they ignored the message, and when time comes for the betrayal and the, um, the crucifixion, they were shocked as if they never listened to this message before. And again, this happens with us many times that there is a continuous message of repentance from the Word of God, from the circumstances around. While praying, we can listen many times to some messages, but actually we may ignore these messages and continue our life as if we received nothing. Then he came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What was it you disputed among yourselves on the road? So they were walking long time, and the disciples usually walk behind him, and while walking, they were discussing something. You know, the Lord knows everything and definitely he knew what was the subject, but he uh, insisted to ask them wh why, what was the subject. <clears throat> he asked them, what was it you disputed among yourselves on the road? But they kept silent. They, you know, were uh, um, 
embarrassed to, to tell him the truth. For on the road they had disputed among themselves who would be the greatest. The problem of this subject, who is the greatest? Who would be the greatest? You know, uh, this is not a good subject to speak uh, or to dispute at. And the Lord uh, mentioned many times the importance of being humble and the virtue of humility. So this kind of um, discussions is never good. That's why they kept silent and they couldn't answer him because they felt sorry for what happened for the discussion was not by the will of the Lord. Who would be the greatest? You know, this question is very serious. And the answer of man on earth is very much different from the answer of the Lord in heaven. Men may consider the rich ones are the greatest. Men may see those who are sitting on the thrones are the greatest, but the Lord may see the poor ones are the greatest or the humble ones, the servants, the loving characters. So there is a great difference between the greatest before the eyes of men and the greatest before the eyes of the Lord. Who would be the greatest? And he sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, If anyone desires to be first, he shall be last of all and servant of all. If anyone desires to be first, so this kind of desire that people have, they look forward to be on the first line to be first before the eyes of men, that everyone looks at them. Um, you know, if you think this way, you need to practice many uh, exercises in the way of humility. So the Lord gave one of them, he shall be last of all and servant of all. Consider yourself as last, consider yourself as servant to everyone, so you can gain this virtue and you will be considered as the greatest before the Lord. How one can consider himself last, although he is rich, he is powerful, he knows many things, he is the leader, many, many people follow him, but you know this is kind of feeling inside the heart. If you keep this feeling that you, you are un, unworthy and you are the last, you are not the first, you are the least, you are little and you feel um, you are not better than anyone. This good feeling when you hold in your heart, you can get this uh, title of the great one before the Lord. Again, the Lord said, if anyone that dies to be first, he shall be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and set him in the midst of them. And when he had taken him in his arms, he said to them, whoever receives one of these little children in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives not me, but him who sent me. So, by telling them that the greatest is the last, is the servant, is the least, he brought one child and he took him in his arms and he told the disciples, consider this child is the greatest and uh, care for this child and other children. And by caring for these little ones, you will... Um, care for the Lord himself. So he said, whoever receives one of these little children in my name receives me. You know, those humble people look at the children in, in a good looking. They consider them very important and much important than, uh, much more important than the elder one and the rich ones. So, you know, we need to have this look 
to the poor ones, little ones, because if I'm, I feel great, I will never look down to these poor ones or little ones. I always consider the good pictured one. But by feeling uh, that I'm the least and the last, I'm serving everybody, I will respect the little children and the little poor guys, and I will receive them uh, as if I'm receiving the Lord himself. And he said, whoever receives me, receives not me, but him who sent me. So we are receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit. We are receiving the presence of God inside our hearts by giving this touch of love, care, humble attitude to the little poor ones around. And we lose this presence of God inside ourselves if we uh, look down to the people and consider ourselves as greatest. So this is very important in practical life that we should care for the poor ones more than the rich and great ones. Next time we will continue our commentaries on chapter 9 of St. Mark Gospel. Glory to God. Amen.